In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the concept of split DNS. To explain the concept of split DNS, we're going to refer to the network diagram shown on the screen. Let's first take a look at normal DNS resolution for an internet network. When an internet client opens up a web browser and types in www.widgets.com, the internet client will go through the DNS process, eventually hit the DNS external server that's hosting the widgets.com zone. In this example, nsd1.widgets.com. At the DNS server, we'll refer the internet client with the IP address of the web server which holds the website www.widgets.com. The internet client will then make a direct connection to that web server and the web page will be served back to the client. On the intranet client, when a user opens up a web browser and types in www.widgets.com, the internet client will communicate with the company's local DNS server. Since the local DNS server is not authoritative for the widgets.com zone, that DNS server will either try to locate the DNS server by using its root hints or forward it to another DNS server, possibly its DNS server is at an ISP. Eventually, the request will make its way to the DNS server holding the widgets.com zone on the internet. That server will respond back with the IP address of the web server back to the local DNS server inside the internet zone and respond back to the client, or the client can go ahead and make a direct connection to the web server on the internet holding the widgets.com website. To this point, we've seen normal DNS resolution. There is no instance of split DNS anywhere in the design. In this example, the company has decided to host a widgets.com zone within the local internet uh, zone. This is called split DNS. This is because we have the widgets.com zone on the internal DNS zone, as well as a widgets.com zone on the external DNS. For the internet client, nothing changes. When an internet client opens up a web browser in this scenario, normal DNS resolution will take place. The external DNS server will respond back to the internet client. On the internet client, when a user opens up the web browser and types in www.widgets.com, the request goes out to the local internet DNS server. In this case, the local internet DNS server is authoritative for the widgets.com zone. Therefore, it will respond back with an answer to the internet, internet client without proceeding with additional name resolution. If the record www is not located within the widgets.com zone, DNS resolution will fail for the internet client. In a split DNS design, records that are stored on the external DNS zone must also be included on the internal DNS zone. In this scenario, for the internet client to be able to access the web server, we must add a record called www and map that to the public IP address of the web server on the internet. The next time the internet client opens up a web browser and types in www.widgets.com and contacts a local DNS server, the DNS server being authoritative for the widgets.com zone will have the necessary information to refer the client directly to the web server out on the internet. In addition to the www record, the DNS administrator must include all records that are found on the external DNS zone so that clients on the internal network can access resources on the external. So for instance, if there's an external FTP server, you must do the same thing for the F FTP record. Having an internal record on the external zone obviously would expose internal resources to internet uh, clients. This is something you definitely want to make sure you don't do. While the split DNS design does add additional effort for the DNS administrator, this design is the only method where you can have name resolution for organizations that have the same internal and external domain name. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.